Um, I want to start with you, Matt Dowd. Uh, he and she who hail from Texas know the um, underbelly of Ted Cruz and being Ted Cruz. And I wonder your thoughts to uh, this bit of political performance art. Well, uh, as you know, I've known Ted Cruz since I worked with Ted Cruz in the 2000 campaign. And to know Ted Cruz is to dislike Ted Cruz. Um, it's pretty uniform, uh, anybody that encounters him. There, I think I've said this before, there used to be an expression where people, reporters would ask us, why do people take such an instant dislike to Ted Cruz? And the answer is it saves time uh, in this. <laughs> I, you know, as I was watching Ted Cruz, I, every time I think he can't go lower, he goes lower. Uh, he reminds me in one way and another way he doesn't of the character Reek from the Game of Thrones, um, the one who Ramsey Bolton sort of used it as his little pet. Uh, the only good thing about Reek was that he had redemption later on when he re be be re became Theon Greyjoy and actually did good in this. Ted Cruz, let's, let's just remind everybody, Ted Cruz is the guy who Donald Trump ripped his father, accused his father of being part of the Kennedy conspiracy, uh, called his wife ugly, and then kissed up to Donald Cruz and this is Ted Cruz. Uh, this is a guy, I don't know if it's physically or anatomically possible, but was born without a backbone, has no moral principle at all other than his own ambition in the court of this. But I think it is another example, what, what I'll give Donald credit uh, uh, one thing for. Donald Trump has been the great revealer of, of people and who they really are. That's one of the things I, I think has been a benefit. We're because of Donald Trump and because of people like Tucker Carlson, they reveal people in the Republican party for what it fundamentally is, which is a party with no moral center, a party with no interest other than power, a party that doesn't care about the common good, that has no distinction between facts and fiction in any of this. And Ted Cruz is a perfect example of it. Ted Cruz represents the Republican Party as good as anybody in this, which is he's willing to say or do anything, including lying, deceiving, sucking up, throwing his his wife and his and his father to the side in pursuit of power. And that is pretty much the headline for where the Republican Party is today. Yeah, I mean, Carol Lennig, I think in five years, I've never um contemplated leading with a Ted Cruz uh, story, but this isn't a Ted Cruz story. This is about what threatens our country, what a terror attack is and is not. And in the words of Ted Cruz on January 7th, 2021, the January 6th insurrection was, quote, a despicable act of terrorism. In the words of Ted Cruz on January 8th, 2021, quote, yesterday's terrorist attack was a horrific assault on our democracy. In the words of Ted Cruz on January 8th, 2021, quote, we saw a terrorist attack in the United States Capitol. On May 28th, 2021, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz said this, quote, the January 6th terrorist attack on the Capitol was a dark moment in our nation's history. And then last night, those words which were uttered, I mean, we, we, we quickly found one, two, three, four, five times, um, were sloppy mistakes. Um, I've never said this either, but Tucker Carlson is right. Um, Ted Cruz picks his craven little words very carefully. What, what, does this, what does this usher in when a Republican senator who clearly described the event and the insurrection as, as a terrorist carrying out a terrorist attack goes on national TV and tries to take all that back? I think two things are going on, which you very, very well described in the opening. But let me give you a few more details. One, uh, to Matt's point, Ted Cruz's latest political embarrassment is is an illustration of the of the party writ large. He did it in a very suck upy kind of way with Tucker Carlson by saying what something is. When people bring flagpoles and bear spray and and weapons and two way radios and march up to the Capitol and attack police, that is a terror attack. And they did it in in group force. You can't really deny that. But the the illustration that he provides is of hundreds of Republican lawmakers. Many, many of them have said to me, they know what is true. They know the election wasn't rigged, and they know January 6th was terrifying because they experienced it, and they were running for their lives through tunnels and hallways with no guide as to where they were supposed to go. 
they know it what exactly what it was, but they can't say that publicly or else they will have hell to pay. And either that is from Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity or the Federalist Society or Donald Trump himself. And that ultimately to them is a loss of voters and they can't have it. I, I guess I would then pivot to the second major reveal of this moment. And that is one you just mo mentioned, Nicole. Where's the power? The power is in the hands of Fox News pundits who have a very high and constant platform to spew information that's just not true. And they're able to do that over and over again. The other day, President Biden tried to wrest that rostrum back from Fox News. Uh, it's a bit late, uh, to yeah. be clear, because they've been repeating and parroting this for so long. But um, that's where we are. The power is in the people who have the bully pulpit. And right now, that's Fox News and Donald Trump.